want to Esther preparation room where women of like passion come together as intercessors to declare God's kingdom over our lives, over the church of God, and over the nations. I want to pray this morning as we go into the time of prayer that the word that we will speak, the meditation of our hearts will be acceptable unto our Father and that we will experience a newness this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, in the same attitude of worship, let us begin to just worship God and thank him for another day, another beautiful, another glorious day. Um, he is a faithful God. He is a father. Let us begin to worship him. Exodus 15, 1, 3 says, I will sing to the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and the rider has been thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength, my song. He has become my salvation. He is my God. I will praise him. My father, my God, I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Let us begin to worship God this morning. Let us just glorify him. Let us give him all the honor, adoration. Let us bless his holy name. Praise is our spiritual weapon. Praise will give you victory. Praise will answer to any prayers at all times. Praise is the, is the straight way to the heart of your king. Let us begin to praise the Lord this morning. Let us come before the Lord with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise with songs of praise. Let us begin to worship him. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Daddy, we bless you. We bless you. God is a spirit and those that worship him have to worship him in spirit and in truth. Daddy, we bless you this morning. Hadonai, we worship you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. You are the Lord. You are our man of war. Daddy, we bless you. We bless you. We exalt your holy name. We give you praise. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for waking us up again this morning. Thank you for, Lord, we, we, we moved and we were able to get up from our bed. Daddy, we worship you this morning. We glorify your holy name. Thank you, Lord. Let us begin to thank God for fighting our battle. Let us begin to thank God because, you know, he is our savior, he is our salvation. Let us begin to thank him for putting the fear of the Lord upon those that hate us, that their hands could not even perform their enterprise. Let us begin to thank God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, because you are fighting for us and we are holding our peace. Lord, we worship you. We worship you. We exalt you. We exalt you. We give you praise. We give you praise. We exalt you, Lord. We praise the Lord. Praise the Lord according to Psalm 1, 4, 4, verse 1. Praise the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands to war. Who trains my fingers to battle? He is my loving, he is my loving father. He is my fortress. He is my stronghold. Let us begin to praise him. Let's worship the Lord, my deliverer, my shield. In him I take refuge. Let us begin to bless the Lord. Thank you, Lord. We worship you. Let us thank God. Let us thank God for he is good and his mercies endure it forever. And his truth endures to all generations. Father, you are faithful, you are gracious, you are awesome. Oh, Daddy, we bless you this morning. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for being a faithful God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for being a righteous and a faithful God. Daddy, we worship you. We worship you because your love is to all everlasting. Daddy, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Your love extends to generations, from generations to generations. Daddy, we worship you. Daddy, thank you for what you have done. Thank you 
for this gathering this morning. Ah, Father, thank you because we know you are here. We know you will do a new thing in our lives, oh Lord. Father, we dedicate this meeting to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Even as we worship you this morning, even as we come before you this morning, Lord, we give you praise, we give you praise, we give you honor, we give you adoration. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Let us thank God for he has blessed, he has blessed our bread and water. He has taken sickness away from us. Let us begin to show gratitude. Let us thank him. Let us thank him because we will fulfill the numbers of our days. In the name of Jesus, we will not cast our young. In the name of Jesus, we will be fruitful in every area. We will glorify the God, our Lord, in the name of Jesus. Our life shall show forth your glory. Our life shall show forth your beauty. Daddy, we glorify you. We bless you, Lord. Thank you for who you are, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We begin to lift up, oh Lord. We lift up our hearts. We lift up holy hands, just worshiping you, bowing down before the throne, before the throne, before the before the throne of grace this morning. Joining, joining the twenty-four elders to say, "You are worthy. You are holy. You are awesome. There is no God like unto you. You are the King of Glory." You are the Lord of all lords. You are the King of all kings. Daddy, we worship you. Emmanuel, Jehovah, Jireh, our El Shaddai, our salvation, the lifter up of our head, our shield. Daddy, we worship you this morning. Thank you for who you are. Thank you, Lord, for all you have done for us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We are sowing the seed of thanksgiving. Daddy, this morning we sow the seed of thanksgiving because we know you can do way abundantly above that which we have asked for. Daddy, thank you for all you have done for us. You are awesome, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we have worshipped. Amen. Thank you, Father. The topic we are looking at this morning um, is waging heavenly wars. Waging heavenly wars. And we're looking um, at kingdom government. Your, the, the, our sense of authority and confidence that we have as Christians, you know, increases with knowledge. It increases with the pre-information that we have. And in this kingdom, in this kingdom of righteousness, you know, we, we have been pre-informed by the word of God, the Bible. The Bible is pretty much everything that God has for us and everything that God has planned for our life. So I was looking at this topic and I went to the book of Ephesians. Uh, pretty much the Ephesians, that book has about six chapters. And everything in that six chapters just kind of, you know, um, help us this morning to be able to see what we need to do in order to weigh, wage heavenly war. So I was looking at chapter one, verse three. Chapter one, verse three of the book of Ephesians says, our blessing is in the heavenly places. Chapter one, verse 20 says, Jesus is seated in the heavenly places. Chapter 2, verse 6 says, You and I are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Chapter 3, verse 10 says, The angels are pray in the heavenly places. And very interestingly, chapter 6, verse 12 says, Spiritual wickedness operates in high places. So one thing that, you know, stood out to me is out of all the, I, I think I have um, from the six verses, I have five of them talking about our position in the heavenly places. And out of those five, um, the, four, the first four is actually talking about us and our righteous father. And he's saying in heavenly places. But when the Bible was going to talk about the spiritual wickedness, 
it says they operate in high places. So there is a difference. They don't operate from the same level you operate. Of course, they, they, there is also, you know, it's all done in the spiritual realm. But the Bible has made it clear that your blessing is in the heavenly places. You are seated in the heavenly places and, you know, you operate from there. But the enemy operates from the high places. And I know a lot of people would read this verse and they would just get stuck on verse 12 which is um you know we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against power and against the ruler of darkness yes the bible said that but ephesians 1 uh, ephesians 1 uh, 121 which is after this one was done 121 said but you are far above all rule, all authority, all power, all dominion, and every name that is named, including the adversary, including the, 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 the Satan, every name that is named, not only in this world, but in the world to come, but in the world to come. So we need not to fret just because we know, you know, the dynamics of, of our weapon is, is not physical, it's spiritual. And then the other thing I wanted us to kind of, you know, uh, bring to mind here is everything operates in the spiritual. For anything to occur in the physical, there is a, a precedence in the spiritual. And what we want to master this morning is how do we war a heavenly war according to what Ephesians has told us. So 11 says, 11 says, put on the whole hammer of God that you may be able to withstand the wiles of the enemy. So wiles mean tricks, deceit, you know? is not really a straightforward person. The enemy is has a lot of deception. So he said, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand in the evil days. What is the evil days? I believe the evil days is trying to tell us that is that day when you feel you have problems around you, when you think you're going through a particular situation that you need God to break through for you, or anything that disturbs your peace in Christ Jesus. I think that is what God is trying to tell us here. He said, you know, the instruction is you have the armor, but you need to put it on. You need to put it on. If you don't put it on, there is no ben you cannot benefit from it. There are six pieces of armor, and, you know, um, in two categories, we have, we have the first set of three, and those are constant. Constantly, God expects you to, to dwell in those. And then the other three are dynamics, which means you use them as needed. You use them as needed. I have titled this uh, message, suit up. Like, just put on your suit but we're talking about the, 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 the spiritual armor. We're talking about what will help you to win the war in this kingdom. God help us this morning. So we're shooting up against the adversary, his tricks, his lie, deception, whatever it is. That is what we are working against this morning. And the Bible says the first instrument that you should constantly have on is the truth. Guide your limbs, you know, with the truth. What is the truth? The truth is the word of God. The truth is the view and the perspective of God. The truth says you are free from bondage. The truth says you have been set free. I remember, you know, I was when I was preparing this, I, I, I noticed that there was something that said um, back in the era of slavery, you know, in Texas, the slaves here were, were still in bondage at least almost two years after, after you know, the law has been and the decree has been done that you know, they, are, they are supposed to uh, be free. But they were still in bondage because they didn't have that information and they didn't know the truth. They were still doing everything a slave would do. 
But eventually, when they came to that knowledge, they, they were set free. Even though their, their freedom was already set forth almost two years ago. So what we are saying now is the word of God. You are guiding yourself with the truth, which is the word of God that will let you know and design and see that, you know, um, this is the lie of the enemy. It's very critical as Christian, you know, to, to, to have that your leons guide with the truth because the, the person you are dealing with is a liar and is a deceiver. The enemy can use something as simple as religion to keep people in bondage. A lot of people are in bondage and it is because they think they are serving a God, but because they cannot design, they cannot design what the Bible has said. They cannot design the truth of God. If was all, if back in the garden was also de deceived, because the, the enemy started the conversation saying, you know what, um, let's talk about God. What did God say? And, you know, then he twisted it. And before she realizes, she already drifted away from the God she wanted to be so close to. Then the second weapon is the breastplate of righteousness. Once you know the truth, once you dwell in the truth, righteousness is automatic. The Bible says, you know, we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The heart is where impurity, doubt, thought, sin, lust, and all of that comes in. But the Bible says we should put on the breastplate of righteousness. As long as you are, you are, you have the truth of the Lord, the, the knowing will come to you what is right, what is wrong, you will be able to declare, I mean, you'll be able to separate the good from the bad because you have the knowledge of God. But overall, Jesus is saying, take on my righteousness. You are the righteousness of God and you can walk in that victory. The shield of faith is the third one. The Bible says, oh, the, sorry, the third one, um, which is the constant that you have to put on every time and every day is peace. The Bible, uh, peace is, is you know how you track that you are in the in the will of god peace will tell you your level of spirituality if you if you have chaos around you and you are all over you are running to people you are you know peace will tell you okay you know this is your level of spirituality the bible says the peace of god will that pass all understanding will guide our heart the peace of God that pass all understanding will guide out. This is a spiritual armor. So that is, those three are the constant one that we have to put on every day. Every day, you want to be peaceful as, as, as much as is in your power. You want to, you know, um, uh, guide your heart. You want to, you want to wear the uh, breastplate of righteousness. And also, you want to read the word of God. You want to be a breast of the word so that you can design when the enemy is bringing his lies. And then we move on to the shield of faith. The Bible says this is what you can use to quench all the fairy darts of the wicked. So faith to me is an action word. Until you move, until you make some, um, 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 you know, some progress, believing that you, you are getting this done, the power is not released. You have to put forth the action and God will back it up. God will back it up with his own authority because you are moving, you are acting based on his word. The other one is the element of salvation. Element of salvation is to help us be in line, align your thinking, align um, your thinking according to your salvation, according to the provision that God has given you in his salvation. What is in that package of your salvation? That is what you need to protect your mind from because the, the, the helmet of salvation is saying you don't want to think like a normal, you know, like a mere man. You don't want to think like a mere man. Put on, put on, put on the helmet of salvation, which is the package that God has given to you. The next one is the sword of the spirit. 
the sword of the spirit um, is the word of God. Once you have soaking the word and you have walked in it, it becomes like an offensive weapon whereby you can say, get thee behind me, Satan. You can cast down every imagination and every I think that exalts itself against the knowledge of the Lord. You can declare and say it is written and it will come to pass. And finally, how do we combine all of this? Because it looks like, you know, it's a lot. How do I put it together? The Bible tells us in verse 18, the same uh, Ephesians 1, 18, it said, praying always with all prayers and supplication in the spirit. Because the spirit of the Lord knows the mind of God, knows what is going on in the heavenly places. And since there is nothing that comes to head without being concluded or being preceded in the heavenly places, the Holy Spirit will guide you to do the right thing, to put on the necessary amounts of ammo that you need in the right places. So this is telling us that, you know, um, prayer is your permission for heavenly intervention. You are telling God, okay, daddy, it's okay. Please come in. I need you at this time. I need your help at this time. I need the turn around at this time. God will always check your agreement. Are you in agreement with his word before, before you know, he sent some things your way? Is that, is, are you in agreement? Are you believing for this? The victory for us as Christians is already pre done is already concluded. But when we are praying, it's not because we are telling God, you know, give me, give me. But it's that we, are, we want to step into our glory. We want to assume that glory and begin to walk in that blessing. And the Lord God himself will keep the enemy away. You know, when you pray in the spirit, you just give God that atmosphere. You give the Holy Spirit that atmosphere, the raw material and the resources that he wants to use because you have the authority. You have the authority. God is waiting on you to do some things. Don't just say, okay, I'm waiting on God to do this. He's giving you the authority. Take charge. Take charge. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, we thank you this morning. We thank you for everything you have done for us. We thank you, Father. We're going to pray this morning that the Lord will keep us, you know, he will purge us, sanctify us, cleanse us from every unrighteousness. In the name of Jesus, the Lord will give us a pure hand, a pure heart, and a, a clean hands in the name of Jesus, that we will not sin against our Father, that we will declare that of a truth we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, in the name of Jesus. We ask for forgiveness in any way we have sinned, O oh Lord, knowingly or unknowingly, any way we have compromised, any way we have been disobedient, any way we have allowed doubt or fear, any way we have not, oh Lord, exalted your word above our circumstances. Lord, have mercy this morning. We pray that you will have mercy, that you will cleanse us, oh God, from every unrighteousness in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, let us begin to pray that God will, 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 will actually rededicate our lives this morning. Let us ask that the Holy Spirit will help us to suit up with this hammer in the name of Jesus. We ask for supernatural understanding. We ask, oh God, that we will walk in the knowledge of your word in the name of Jesus. That at all times, oh God, Father, we will suit up, oh God. The enemy will not have a place in us in the name of Jesus. The enemy will not have a foothold in our lives in the name of Jesus. Daddy, we commit everything to your hands, O God, in the name of Jesus. We will walk in the righteousness and we will use the armor of God in the name of Jesus at all times. In the name of Jesus. Let us claim that the peace of God that pass all understanding will guard our hearts and our mind through Christ Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, thank you because the peace of God that transcends all understanding will guide our heart and it will guide our mind in the name of Jesus. We will trust more in you, O Lord. We will not be tossed up and down by the events of life in the name of Jesus. We will not be looking, oh God, to men. We will not look to men. We will not look for... We, our help will come from above in the 
name of Jesus. We would not, we will be, we will stay, we would take our stand in the name of Jesus upon the word of God. And the word of God will come true for us in, in the name of Jesus. Let us begin to pray by the spirit of the Lord that we will exercise authority and dominion in the name of Jesus. Every yoke of the enemy we begin to destroy in the name of Jesus because we have that authority. Jesus gave that authority because he became the accused so that the enemy will find nothing in us. In the name of Jesus, he took our place. He took our place and gave us the victory. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Thank you for that dominion. Thank you for that authority. Father, we will begin to speak like the sons of God. We will begin to walk in the knowledge of the sons of God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. In the name of Jesus, every power. In the name of Jesus, you would we destroy every yoke of the enemy. In the name of Jesus, every spirit of stagnancy or backwardness, we come against you by the blood of Jesus. We come against you by the blood of Jesus. Every generational or foundational cause, we come against you by the blood of Jesus. Because the blood of Jesus perfected all that concerns us on the cross of Calvary. We break every chain, every yoke in the name of Jesus, because the Bible says we are we are far above principalities and power. In the name of Jesus, we enforce our authority this morning. In Jesus' name, let us be begin to pray that God will quench every fairy doubt of the wicked. In the name of Jesus, He would destroy every counsel of the ungodly. Their hands would not be able to perform their enterprise. In the name of Jesus, every tongue that is risen against us is condemned in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we begin to plead the blood of Jesus. And we decree, we declare that we overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. In the name of Jesus, the weapon of our warfare is not carnal. For it is mighty, true God, to the pulling down of strongholds. In the name of Jesus, we pull down every stronghold, everything that might want to keep us down. We pull it down in the name of Jesus. Let us declare that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We begin to call forth that fountain of life that comes from the Lord Jesus Christ himself in the name of Jesus. The flow of life from God, we, might, we, we cover us in the name of Jesus. He will extend, oh God, into our career, into our ministry, into our gift, into the church of God. We will see the life of God showing forth. We will see the goodness and the glory of God coming forth in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, we are prayed. Amen. The second thing I just wanted to bring to us in this waging war, um, um, you know, topic is defend your portion. Defend your portion. Your destiny, your gift, your achievement, success, acquisition, marriage, salvation, your calling, whatever God has blessed you with. Whatever the provision of God in the word of God, whatever will make your life, will beautify your life to give God the glory, that is your portion. That is your portion. But your adversary, the Bible says, is a stealer, is a killer, and is a destroyer. That is why we have to stand our ground in, you know, protecting our portion. Who wants to, like, like productivity will always, whatever God is interested in, attracts the devil or attracts the enemy as well. Because, you know, the, 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 the enemy doesn't really want to see that success in the life of the children of God. I'm going to take us back to um, 2 Samuel 23:12. The Bible says the Israelites have labored. And just when they are about to reap their harvest, the enemy showed up. The Philistines showed up. And the troop of Israel fled from their field. They fled from their field for their lives. But except for one man, Shammah, 
the Bible described him as the son of Ig, the Herahite. He was the only one that was left on the field and he refused to let his portion go. He refused, he refused to be denied of what God has given him. Uh, um, um, he refused to let the enemy steal from him. Most of the time when it comes to the battle of destiny, you might find out that you are in that battle by yourself, but you are not by yourself because God is with you. You are not by yourself because your father knows definitely that this is coming up and he has given you a way of escape. He has given you a way of escape. The enemy may, may, we, we may want to, to attack because there is a glory of God upon your life. Or maybe you are different. Or maybe you're because of your faith. Or it could be anything. It could be that just because your life is reminding the devil that you know, is a failure. The enemy may want to show up his ugly head. But what does the, the Bible say? It says you have authority to tread upon serpent and scorpion and everything that wants, to, that wants to take away your peace. A lot of people lose their portion because they are discouraged. Because they are discouraged about life and about everything coming to them at once. They have to fight for their work, their family, their peace. Their, they have to fight for everything pretty much. But don't lose, don't lose your peace. Don't lose your peace. It's because of the, the, the glory of God that is about to show forth in your life. That is why the enemy is bringing discouragement. That is why it seems you are always on the battlefront. That is why it seems like, you know, there is never a time you can relax and say, you know, I, I thank God for this period. Before one period is done, you see another, another fight, another battle coming up. You are not alone. You are not alone because your dad, your father is a man of war. You are not alone because your dad is a man of war. First Corinthians 4.10 says, Jabez, call upon the God of Israel. And he says that you will bless me indeed and enlarge my territory. It is because when your territory is enlarged, enlarged, you bring glory to God. And a lot of people will hear your testimony and they will want to trust God. They will want to believe God and walk in the path of, you know, what God has, um, has given them. But the enemy doesn't want that to happen. So that's why you are facing all of this. But the Bible says the one thing, every time I, I look at different scenarios in the Bible, the one thing that is common to all of them is once they cry out, once the righteous cry out, they will never be forsaken. They will never be left alone. The, the, the righteous will never be left alone and neither would their, would their, would their seed beg bread. The Lord will grant the request of their heart. Every time, every story that I've read, you know, when I was trying to put this together, the only thing that come across it is God is giving victory. Once you cry out, God arise to the situation and arise to, to that, uh, 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 to protect your portion. That is why you cannot let your portion, you cannot let go. You have to defend your portion. Fight the good fight of faith. Defend and protect what God has given to you. Defend and protect that destiny. Those, those that God has committed into your hands, your children, defend it in the name of Jesus. Let us begin to pray. Let us decree that we will eat the fruit of our hands in the name of Jesus. Another will not reap our harvest in the name of Jesus. We declare our portion is secured in Christ Jesus in the name of Jesus. We will not build for another to inhabit. We will not plan for another to eat in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, with long life, will he satisfy us and he will show us his salvation in the name of Jesus. We declare <coughs> that we will eat the fruit of our hands in the name of Jesus. Let us begin to pray. Let us begin to declare in the name of Jesus that our portion is secured in Christ Jesus. Let us decree breakthrough, 
breakthrough into, into the life that God has given us. Every portion, every blessing that the Lord has given us, we cover it with the blood of Jesus. We will experience, we will experience increase in our lives in the name of Jesus, in the life of our children, in the life of our family, in the church of God, in our ministry, in our personal life, in everything, promotion, our anointing, abundance of God from heaven. We will experience in the name of Jesus, the glory and the honor of God. We will experience in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, because no weapon formed or fashion against us shall prosper. Every tongue that is risen against us in judgment is condemned. This is the heritage of the children of the Lord, and we walk in it because the Lord is our righteousness. In the name of Jesus, let us begin to declare that we that the favor of God is giving us access in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we tap into the secret places, we tap into the supernatural resources of God in the name of Jesus. We claim our inheritance, we claim our healing, we claim our financial abundance, we claim the knowledge and, and the faithfulness to, to walk with God. We claim in increase in every way in the name of Jesus. The Lord will give us the treasure of darkness, the hidden riches of secret places in the name of Jesus. We walk in it. We walk in it in Jesus' name. Let us begin to declare <clears throat> that we triumph in Christ Jesus. We claim anointing and favor and divine orchestration to go before us in the name of Jesus. We triumph in Christ Jesus. We triumph in Christ Jesus. We are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We claim his anointing. We claim his favor. We claim, oh God, that in this kingdom, oh Lord, we will, we will, we will show forth your glory in the name of Jesus. You will help us, oh God, in the name of Jesus. That we know there is no limit upon our lives. There is no bondage. There is no, no chain. We break away from every limitation of life in the name of Jesus. Jesus. We see increase all around. We see increase all around and our life is a testimony unto your glory. Our life will bring you glory. Our life will bring you glory. In the name of Jesus, we declare that we are triumphant in Christ Jesus. Let us begin to declare we are triumphant in Christ Jesus. We thank you for the anointing of favor, for the divine orchestration, for connecting the dots in our life, for making all the things look beautiful and working together for our good. Oh Lord, we just worship you back as so terrible. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the abundance of life. Thank you for the abundance of life. Thank you for increase, oh God. You are the fountain of life. We worship you. Let us begin to declare that we are new creation. All things have passed away. All things have become new. We declare this is our new beginning in the name of Jesus. We pray, oh Lord, that this is our new beginning. We will begin to walk in the knowledge of God. We will begin to move closer to you, oh Lord. The eyes of our understanding will be enlightened that we may know what is the hope of our calling in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, let us lift up our family. Let us pray for their salvation. Father, we thank you because as many of them, oh Lord, that are in our family, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, we will pray for their salvation. We will pray, oh God, for salvation for as many people you have called into your kingdom. Let us begin to pray for the church of God. Let us begin to pray that the, the church of God will unite in the name of Jesus. The church of God will, will hunger and tax after righteousness, we would desire the sincere milk of the world. Father, we thank you. We thank you because you're awesome. Thank you. Thank you for the victory we have in you. Thank you for the package that you have given us through our salvation. Lord, we walk in it by faith in the name of Jesus. Blessed that it be thou glorify, O oh Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. We're going to have one of our very own, Taiwo, take us through the persecuted church. 
Thank you, Pastor Titi. Um, Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, this morning, we're going to be praying for Lao, um, for the persecuted church in Lao. Lao is a landlocked nation um, that covers over about 200 square, square kilometers, um, somewhere in uh, the center of East Asia um, Peninsula. It's surrounded by Burma, um, Cambodia, China, Thailand, and Vietnam. Uh, it's not a very big nation from what the stats, um, um, the size I just called out. Um, the president is um, Bao Hang Borachi. Um, it has a system of government that is a unitary system of government. Um, which is a one-party system, socialist party, which basically means that um, only one party has the right to form the government. Um, all other parties are either outlawed or allowed to take a limited um, participation in elections. Um, the predominant, predominant um, religion is um, Buddhism. Um, so most people in Lao um, practice Buddhism. They also have about 31% um, that still practices the Laotian folk religion. Um, just one, about 1% one or almost 2% um, practice Christianity. Um, and then you have other religions um, that take about less than 2%. Um, the so source of persecution in Lao is the co basically communist authorities, local leaders, um, and immediate communities and families. Um, the population of Lao is about 7 million, with only about 200,000 being Christians. Um, the situation right now is you have communist authorities that heavily monitor all religious activities, including those of um, registered Christian churches. All religious gatherings must be reported beforehand. Um, house, um, church, so there are a lot of church houses, um, and they're forced to operate illegally in secret. So converts to Christianity become outside, outsiders within their Buddhist um, communities since, like I said, mentioned earlier, um, it's predominantly a Buddhist society. Um, so they're pressured by family members and local authorities to, to recant their, their faith. Um, some, believers, some believers are arrested and detained um, when caught in these illegal churches, so to speak, um, and uh, or when Bibles or other Christian literature have been discovered. Um, others are threatened, fined, and beaten. Um, in some cases, there have been some deaths and cover-ups. Um, so today, you know, we can start by praying for Christians who live in Lao. Um, it's easy to see how they can live in constant fear, fear of being challenged everywhere they go, you know, fear of being antagonized and persecuted for their faith. So let's pray Ephesians 6, 10, 12. Um, um, that they, that God may strengthen them in their in His power, and that they may be strengthened in the in the in God's power and might. That um, that He dresses them in 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 His armor, and that they can stand firm against the schemes of the devil. Um, we know that we struggle; our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers and against powers, against the world forces of this darkness. So against and against spiritual forces and of wickedness in heavenly places. So let's pray, Father in heaven, that Father in heaven, that you be with the people that in Lao right now, our brothers and sisters in Lao, that right now that you cover them, oh God, that they stand firm in their faith, oh God, that it's so easy to live in constant fear, but Father Lord, that you grant them a heart that is set, oh God that is set in you, O oh God, that found its security and stability in you, O oh God. Let them let them lean on you constantly, O oh God, that, that, that you may take away the spirit of fear, O oh God, but grant them the spirit of power and of love and a sound mind, even in these times, Father in heaven. Let's pray for God's protection. Psalm 91 says that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty that we will say of the Lord that he is our refuge and our fortress in God in whom we trust, that he will deliver, he will save us from the snare of the father and from the noiseless pestilence, that he will cover us with his feathers and under his wings we will find refuge and his faithfulness will be a shield and buckler. Let's begin to pray for our brothers and sisters in Lao right now, that they shall that they shall abide in his most secret place, O God, that they shall find refuge in him, O God, that even if a thousand falls at their side and a thousand at their left, um, right, right, um, right hand, that none shall come near them, that God's protection shall be with them, O oh God, that his angels shall surround them, 
as a shield that no harm shall come near them and whatever it, that, that whatever it is oh god that comes against them oh god that they will be back to sender that father that that truly in these times oh god they shall see god's faithfulness they shall see god's 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 guidance let's begin to pray for for god's comfort especially for believers whose family members have been murdered or are now missing for their faith um let's you know this this is this happens a lot, and most times it's hard for people, for some Christians, to just find comfort in 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 God. But let's just pray that you know that God that they begin to experience a kind of healing and a peace that only God can give. That that the um, Psalms 34, 18 says, "The Lord is close to the brokenhearted; He rescues those who are crushed in spirit." Father, we just pray this morning that for our brothers and sisters in Lao, oh God, that are experiencing times of mourning, oh God, that are experiencing times of loss, oh Father, that 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 are, are uh, that have that are missing their loved ones, Father in heaven. We pray that you 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 heal their broken hearts, oh God, and that you grant them peace, a peace that surpasses all understanding, even in these times, oh God. For for your word says that when you are about to take off, you said, I'm leaving you with the gift of peace of mind and heart. And the peace that is not that um, you give, oh God, it's not fragile. It's the it, it, that like it's not as fragile as the peace that the world gives, so that we are not troubled or afraid, oh God. So Father Lord, we ask that you, you grant them a peace. A peace that only you can give, even in these times, as as they as they mourn or as they pray, patiently wait for the return of their loved ones. Let's pray. Let's pray that whatever circumstances the persecuted Christians in Lao, you know, find themselves in, that they will understand and find peace in the sufficiency of God's grace, even in their weaknesses. While facing the physical threats, you know, the oceans may be put into scenarios where they must, you know, make quick choices under great pressure. For this reason, we pray that they understand the promises of 2 Corinthians 12, 9, which says that my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Let's begin to pray that, that um, you know, that they begin to find, uh, 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 they find God's grace sufficient for them, that they're able to even to live normal lives, even in, dire, even in those circumstances, that in everything they do, in every circumstance they face, that, the great, that they are able to, to, be, to seek the richness of God's grace in their lives. Let's begin to pray that, that, you know, that, that they are able to access this grace and, and live almost normal lives, oh God, as Christians and not, you know, not wavering, not trying to, you know, hide, but to be proud and to boast of, of their faith in Christ and to stand out there, to be counted. Let's begin to pray, you know, pray that whatever their circumstances, God will give them the right words, the right things to say. In, in the different situations they find themselves in. In Ephesians 6, 9 to 20, Paul asks his fellow believers to pray also for me that whenever I open my mouth, words, words may be given to me that I will, you know, sound fearless make known, and make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fairly as I should. Let's begin to pray for for, the, for our brothers and sisters in love, declare that even as they open their mouths, that that God gives them words. Then in front of us, God grants them a fearlessness that they may make known the mystery of the gospel. That as they stand, they be ambassadors. That they are ambassadors in chains, and that they, they, they declare the name of the Lord fearlessly, fearlessly, and that they say the right words. And that we pray that let's begin to pray that their witness would inspire those who seek to harm them. Let's begin to pray that even as they speak, many will turn their heads. Those that are out to harm them would, would change, have a change of heart. In Luke 6, um, verses 27, 30, 31, you know, the apostle said, but I say to you here, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you, give them a heart that and not only would they inspire them with their words, but let them begin to inspire them with their actions. Let them be able to extend love to their enemies. Let them begin to, to, to pray for their enemies. Let them, let them bless those that curse them. Let's begin to pray, even now, that for the government, the communist authorities, all individuals that carry out these acts of persecution, and members of all other religious groups, you know, that they may find God in all of this and repent. 
in, in, in their case, the God of this age has blinded, that's according to 2 Corinthians 4, 4. It says that in their case, the God of this age has blinded their minds, um, the minds of the unbelievers, keep them from seeing the light of the gospel, of the glory of Christ, who is um, the image of God. But we, let's begin to pray that the scales begin to fall from their eyes, that even as they interact with these um, Christian notions, oh God, that they begin to have a change of heart, that they begin to experience that, that God trades their hearts of stones to hearts of flesh, that he's able to speak to them, oh God, that they're able to change their ways, that be, they're beginning to see the glory of Christ in the lives of these Laotians, that this nation that is predominantly a Buddhist nation would begin to experience a change like no other, starting from the, the party system, the, you know, the people that live in the rural areas, the people that practice the ocean folk that they begin to to express the love of Christ and that they begin to 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 have a change of heart and come to Christ and begin to repent to repent begin to repent the Bible says that you know that if we cry out to him that he is willing to come and heal their land and we can stand in the gap for our brothers and sisters in the ocean right now and just call out for a healing in the land oh God a healing in the land Father in heaven, we thank you because we know, oh God, that you are the one, oh God, that can give us salvation. You're the giver of salvation. You've given it. You gave it when you gave when you sent your son to die for us, and you gave it for free. We begin to pray for this this country and for the Christians and the non-Christians alike that you begin to restore everything that's been broken, that hearts that have turned away from you, oh God, that you bring them back to you. Hearts that people that don't know you, they begin to see you, recognize you, and begin to come to you. Father Lord, we thank you, we worship you, because we know that every everything happens for a reason. But more importantly, God, we know that at the end of the day, all things will, all things will give you glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for that powerful session. Thank you, sisters, for joining us again today. Um, join us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, we are also planning uh, for our retreat. God is so faithful. He's, he's, he's coming and we are so excited. We are planning for that. We thank God for another year another wonderful year we're looking forward to it and i just want to encourage everyone um please um you can actually register you can do your pre-registration the registration has started and we just wanted to make sure that at least as many of us that can do that that will give us time ample time to plan ahead so we are looking for you to, uh, we're looking forward to that support please go ahead and pre-register for our retreat we are so excited about it and we know god is going to do a new thing it's going to do a wonderful thing thank you so much um for joining us again this week um it's been a pleasant time and um, i can see the list of names i will have called out maybe some names that i'm not familiar with uh but you know what god god knows you're here and god has been waiting for you and your blessing will be full in the name of Jesus. Another will not take your place in the name of Jesus. As many of us that have logged on every week, week in, week out, or some of us that, you know, for one reason or the other, we can't even log on in the name of Jesus because he is our father from the throne of grace. He will extend his grace on, upon our lives in the name of Jesus. We will find favor in the least expected places in the name of jesus he will open the door that no man can shut unto us in the name of jesus we will not pray in vain we will not pray in vain every seed that we have sown in prayers we will eat out of it our generations to come will eat out of it and we will declare and say of the truth we serve a living god thank you my sisters i'm always excited to have you on God bless you and see you next week.